Welcome all. Welcome to today's online class. Today we discuss the last part of IR spectroscopy that is applications of IR spectroscopy. First of all we discuss about the concept of what is group frequencies. We know that IR frequency that is the frequency of IR radiation required for the vibrational transition of a molecule is given by the equation nu bar equal 1 by 2 pi c root of k by mu that means the frequency which is in wave number is depends on two factors one is k that is the uh, bone that is force constant which is a measure of the bone strength and mu is a measure of the atomic mass of the bonded atoms okay so scientists studied about the IR spectrum of various related molecules for example alcohols contain OH bond so they took various alcohols like methanol ethanol isopropanol phenol etc and studied about the IR spectrum of these molecules and they could average out the frequency value for this OH group, OH stretching frequency. So data is available for of the IR frequency of various functional groups or various bonds. So this is a concept of group frequency that is the IR frequency of a particular functional group or a structural unit which is independent of the rest of the molecule. So there are some important values given here to be familiar with which give an idea about where the IR frequency comes for various structural parts of a molecule especially organic molecule. We know that the IR range used for the study is middle IR which ranges from 667 to 4000 cm inverse. The largest IR frequency comes for this OH stretching frequency. OH as well as NH comes almost together and the value is around 3400 cm inverse. Okay, now this NH and OH you know undergo hydrogen bonding very much. So due to hydrogen bonding the value may get lowered. So if there is hydrogen bonding this value may fall, it may lower to around 3200 or even lower when there is hydrogen bonding. So in that sense, IR spectroscopy has another application that is we can uh, use it to study hydrogen bonding. Study of hydrogen bonding is possible with IR because when there is hydrogen bonding, IR frequency will lower. Why it is lowering? See, suppose this is an alcohol, ROH. If there is intermolecular hydrogen bonding, it is coming like this here, between two molecules. This is hydrogen bond. Now, it is that when a hydrogen bond appear here, that will be the at the cost of this OH bond or this bond become weak. Okay, so this OH bond will become weak. When the bond strength decreases, when K value decreases, frequency falls. That is why hydrogen bonding lowers the IR frequency. So, the extent of, the amount of lowering will give you an idea about the extent of hydrogen bonding. So, that is the application of IR spectroscopy in studying about hydrogen bonding. Okay, now... Coming to other values, after that comes the next value, uh, lower value is that of CH stretching comes around 3000 cm inverse. If it is aromatic CH bond which will be stronger, the value will be slightly above 3000. Okay, that is how we distinguish the two, aliphatic and aromatic. If it is aliphatic, 
that is sp3 for example sp3 carbon this one is sp3 this is sp2 you know in that case the frequency is a slightly lower than 3000 it comes around 2850 or 900 like that so by this you can distinguish aliphatic and aromatic looking at the ch touching frequency after that comes c triple bond n and c triple bond c which comes in alkynes and this comes in nitrile or cyanide this touching frequency is around 2200 then comes c double bond o see this is the most important and notable ir frequency because this very intense peak you get in ir that of CO and CO carbonyl group is very much in aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid and all the derivatives. The value comes around 1700. It can sometimes slightly increase or decrease depending upon the groups connected. Okay. And then C double bond C carbon carbon double bonds which comes in alkenes in aromatic ring etc. will give stretching frequency values Two peaks you get around 1600, 1475. Finally, C single bond or C single bond N. Where does this, this come? C single bond O comes in which kind of uh, compounds? It will be there in alcohol, in ether, in carboxylic acid, etc. C single bond N comes in amines, etc. Their value is very low, 1100. So that's about group frequencies. This is an important uh, apply, uh, part of the application of IR because noting these values we can predict the presence of a particular functional group we can predict the absence as well if there is no peak at uh, around this value what you can say that the compound is not alcohol or amine like that now next we we go on to another important aspect uh, important concept in IR spectroscopy, what is called fingerprint region. What is fingerprint region in IR spectroscopy? See, when you look at the IR spectrum of a, a compound, which ranges between 667 to 4000, right? You know, percentage transmittance is plotted against wave number, right? And the, the peaks comes like this, you may get some peaks uh, depending upon the compound, there will be peaks somewhere here and all. And you can see that there are so many peaks coming between this 1000, uh, this 667 to 1400. So we talk about what is fingerprint region. See, the first point is fingerprint region is the region in IR spectrum that is between 667 to 1400 centimeter inverse. Roughly speaking, 700 to 1400 centimeter inverse. This is called fingerprint region. Why? See, first thing is that this is a range. Number two is that in this range, we can see maximum number of peaks. Maximum number of peaks are seen here. That is the second point. Why? Why so many peaks, less peaks outside this fingerprint region? That is because the stretching frequencies of C single bond O, C single bond N, C single bond C, etc., which very much comes in various organic compounds, all these stretching frequencies are coming in this region. So there will be so many carbon carbon bond, right? So all this comes here, peaks corresponding to CC stretching frequency and also almost all bending vibrations, okay, bending vibrations, the frequency corresponding to bending vibration, we have learned in previous classes that bending requires less energy, right? So all bending vibrations of various bonds also come in this region, that is why there are so many peaks coming in this region. So these are the three points I have told you. Now, why it is called fingerprint region? You know that fingerprint of a person is 
the identity of the person. We can identify uh, a, per a person by checking his fingerprint like that. The fingerprint region of an IR spectrum is so characteristic of a molecule. It is so char characteristic, it is very characteristic, it is very unique of a molecule that it can be used to detect the compound. The compound can be detected by checking the fingerprint part of the spectrum. That means if you have two similar molecules, for example, you have methanol as well as, suppose you have methanol as well as ethanol, right? Two compounds. And this is suspected. You can detect, distinguish them. See, both compounds will give an OH peak somewhere around 3500. You will get a, a broad peak for this OH. And from looking at this OH peak, you cannot distinguish which is methanol, which is ethanol. But this fingerprint region will be very characteristic. It will be very unique. So fingerprint region will make a difference between even two very similar compounds. So in that respect, fingerprint region of IR spectrum is used to identify a compound. That is what is fingerprint region. And then in the application, we, uh, you know, the application of spectroscopy is mainly for structural elucidation of compounds. Let's take one example here for structural elucidation. What is the structure of, what is the structure of thioacetic acid? That's a question. Structure of thioacetic acid. Okay, what is the molecular formula? Thioacetic acid, see, you know acetic acid. C3, uh, CH3COO, it's right. This is acetic acid. When it is thioacetic acid, thio means sulfur, there is one sulfur coming. So the question is, where is this sulfur? So one oxygen replaced by one sulfur. So one possibility is that sulfur can be here. And another possible structure is CH3CO and here, this oxygen is replaced by sulfur. So, sulfur can come either here. So, there are two possibilities, right? So, which is a correct structure? That is a question. So, we mark these structures as this is structure 1 and this is structure 2. So, how IR spectroscopy can be used to detect the structure? It's very simple. You take your sample, thioacetic acid, and take its IR spectrum and not the uh, important group frequencies. It is found that this thioacetic uh, acid is giving mainly two peaks, one around 1730, 1730 centimeter inverse, and another peak is coming around 2600 centimeter inverse. We can relate these values to, this is due to C double bond O, okay, and this is characteristic of SH bond, IR frequency of SH bond. So these values tell you that the molecule contains CO group as well as SH group, in which structures it is there, it is in support of this one, right, it is in support of this structure. Because it contains C double bond O and SH. Whereas here it is C double bond S whose IR frequency is different. And OH also is there and value is different. Actually the value corresponding to this CS is coming around 1100. C double bond S is 1100. And for OH you know it is coming around 3400. These values are not found. So we can rule out this structure and IR data in support of these structures. This is how we arrive at structures of an unknown molecule even. We can determine the structure of a compound uh, by analyzing the IR spectrum. Now finally, 
IR spectrum is used for studying hydrogen bonding that I already told you. Due to hydrogen bonding, especially OH and NH frequency lowers. Greater the hydrogen bonding, greater the lowering. So by noting the extent of lowering of IR frequency of NH and OH groups, we can study about the extent of hydrogen bonding in a molecule. That's all in IR spectroscopy. Thank you for watching this video.